Standing tall on Liberty Island, overlooking the bustling city of New York, the Statue of Liberty is one of the most recognizable symbols of freedom in the world. But beyond its towering presence and symbolic meaning, there's a fascinating story about the material that makes this iconic monument so enduring. At the heart of the Statue of Liberty's construction lies copper, the element that you chose to discuss this week. 179,000 pounds or 81,000 kilograms of it, to be exact. This medal not only gives Lady Liberty her famous green hue, but also ensures her longevity against the elements. Copper's role in the Statue of Liberty is more than just skin deep. The metal's unique properties, including its ability to resist corrosion and form a protective patina, have preserved this statue for over a century. But Copper's connection to the Statue of Liberty is just one chapter in a long history of this remarkable metal. As we explore Copper's properties and its many applications, you'll discover why this ancient element continues to play a vital role in our world today. Just as it does in the structure of America's beloved symbol of freedom. Welcome to Cube Chemistry, where we will discuss all the elements of the periodic table and also do experiments. And if you like these videos and want to see more, make sure to subscribe. Copper's widespread use in the Statue of Liberty is no accident. Its unique properties make it the perfect material for a monument that was intended to last for centuries. Here are some of its key characteristics that make copper essential, not just for Lady Liberty, but countless other applications. So what do we got here? Well, first of all, as you can see in this acrylic cube, it has an orange, well, shiny-like structure. It's actually quite beautiful and it, it, it's a metal. It has uh, 29 protons and 29 electrons. That's why it's having the atomic number 29. Um, it's marked with the letters CU and it has a mass weight of 63.546. Copper has a rich history that spans over 10,000 years. It was one of the first metals used by humans, with evidence of its use dating back to around 8000 BCE, during the Neolithic period. Early civilizations such as the Egyptians and the Sumerians used copper for tools, weapons and ornaments. The discovery of copper alloying with tin led to the Bronze Age, around 3300 BCE, revolutionizing tools and weaponry. The name copper is derived from the Latin word cuprum, which comes from cyprium, meaning metal from Cyprus, due to the island's rich copper resources in ancient times. The CU we still use in the periodic table. Copper doesn't rust like iron, instead it undergoes a chemical process called patina formation when exposed to air and moisture. In this process, copper reacts with the oxygen and the carbon and water from the environment to form a greenish layer of copper carbonate. This patina acts as a protective shield, preventing further corrosion and preserving the metal underneath. In contrast, oxidation in metals like iron leads to rust, where the iron oxide flakes off continuously, exposing fresh metal to corrosion, ultimately weakening the structure. The difference lies in how these metals react to oxygen. Copper forms a stable protective layer, while iron oxide deteriorates and exposes more metal to further damage. This is why the Statue of Liberty, originally shiny copper, has developed a green patina that has helped to preserve it against the harsh weather conditions of the New York Harbor for over a century. Copper can be easily shaped without breaking which allows the statue's creator to mold her into the detailed and intricate figure we see today. The thin copper sheets that form the outer skin of the Statue of Liberty were shaped by hand and attached to a steel framework, demonstrating copper's excellent workability. This property is not unique to the statue. Copper's malleability makes it ideal for intricate designs, art and industry. The next property may not be directly related to the Statue of Liberty, but it's still vital in copper's many other applications. Copper's ability to conduct heat and electricity efficiently makes it indispensable in electric wiring, electronics and cookware. Now what makes copper so conductive? Now that is due to its atomic structure. In a copper atom, there is a single electron in its outermost shell, the 4s orbital which is loosely bound to the nucleus. The electron can move freely between the atoms in a copper lattice, creating a sea of electrons. When an electric field is applied, 
These free electrons will flow easily, allowing electric current to pass through with minimal resistance. Additionally, the close-packed atomic structure of copper enables efficient energy transfer, making it one of the best conductors of electricity and heat. In fact, copper wiring is used extensively in homes and industries due to its ability to transport electricity with minimal loss of energy. Copper naturally kills bacteria, which is why it's often used in hospitals and public spaces. Copper is antibacterial, due to its ability to disrupt vital processes in bacterial cells. When bacteria come into contact with copper surfaces, copper ions are released. These ions penetrate the bacterial cell walls and interfere with critical cellular functions such as enzyme activity, protein structures and membrane integrity. This leads to production of reactive oxygen species, ROS, which further damage the cell and ultimately cause bacteria to die. Copper's effectiveness against a wide range of bacteria, including antibiotic resistance strains, makes it a valuable material in healthcare and public settings. This property may not have been a consideration when the Statue of Liberty was built, but it showcases the metal's versatility and importance in modern health applications. Copper is also beneficial in biological functions, plays a role in forming red blood cells and maintaining healthy nerves and bones. Copper is 100% recyclable and nearly 80% of the copper that is ever mined is still in use today. It can be recycled over and over without losing its properties, retaining 95% of its original value. Which is why it's considered a sustainable resource. This characteristics makes copper an environmental friendly material that contributes to a circular economy. Copper tools don't generate sparks, which is why they are used in environments with flammable gases or explosives. Copper does not spark because it's a non-ferrous metal, meaning it does not contain iron. Sparks are typically caused by the friction or impact of materials that can ignite in the presence of oxygen, often involving ferrous metals like steel. Copper, on the other hand, it has a high thermal conductivity and a low tendency to accumulate heat in localized area when struck or rubbed. This prevents the metal from reaching the temperatures needed to create a spark, making it ideal for the use in environments where flammable gases or explosives are present. This makes copper invaluable in industries where safety is paramount. As electric vehicles EVs, become more prevalent, copper's role will grow due to its increased need for copper in batteries and motors. Beyond transportation, copper is vital in powering homes and devices. The average home contains about 400 pounds or 181 kilograms of copper in wiring, plumbing and other appliances and the average person will use 1500 pounds or around 680 kilograms of copper throughout their life for modern conveniences. Copper's durability and workability have made it a staple in coinage for centuries. The US penny, once made entirely out of copper, now contains a significant amount of copper alloy, reflecting the metal's long-standing role in currency. Europe, copper and its alloys are widely used in coins due to their affordability and resistance to wear and tear. US coins today consist of a solid copper core with a layer of copper nickel alloy. Just as copper was used for water pipes in ancient civilizations, it continues to be a material of choice for modern plumbing systems. Copper pipes are resistant to corrosion, can handle high temperatures and are safe for drinking water, ensuring that homes and buildings have reliable plumbing systems. In the kitchen, copper is prized for its excellent heat conductivity, which ensures even cooking. Professional chefs often prefer copper pots and pans because they allow for precise temperature control, making copper an essential tool in culinary arts. Copper cookware is favored because it delivers a uniform cooking with no hot spots. Beyond the Statue of Liberty, copper has been a favored material for artists and sculptures for centuries. Its malleability allows it for intricate designs and its ability to develop patina gives sculptures a timeless weathered look. 
Copper can be alloyed with tin to create bronze and with zinc to create brass, which is used in everything from art and musical instruments to industrial applications. All gold, even the 24 karat gold, contains some level of copper to enhance its durability and workability, demonstrating copper's essential role in crafting fine jewelry. Copper's excellent conductivity makes it ideal for earthing systems, which protect buildings and people from lightning strikes by safely conducting the electricity into the ground. Copper's connection to the Statue of Liberty highlights its enduring importance as a material that is both beautiful and functional. Just as copper has helped us preserve one of the most famous monuments, it continues to play a crucial role in countless aspects of modern life, from powering our homes and devices to keeping us safe and healthy. Copper is a metal that has stood the test of time. Its unique properties, corrosion resistance, malleability, conductivity and antibacterial nature make it indispensable in a wide range of applications. And with its ability to be recycled without losing any of its qualities, copper is not just a metal of the past but a sustainable resource for the future. As we continue to advance technologically and environmentally, copper's role will only become more significant. Whether it's in the form of a towering statue or wiring in our walls, copper remains a silent but powerful force, shaping our world in both big and small. So, the next time you look up at the Statue of Liberty or turn on the light, take a moment to appreciate the incredible journey of copper, the metal that has been with us from the dawn of civilization and will continue to be part of our future. And that concludes our story. If you think I missed anything in this episode, let me know in the comments. And if you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe. Next week, we will be doing another experiment. So make sure to fill in the poll to influence what experiment I will be doing. Thank you and see you next week.